Hi everybody, in the previous video we got our virtual firewall running pfSense deployed, we had the networking and so on sectioned off, but we still have some machines that we got set up earlier, the, the physical host, the domain control, the vCenter, and those are still running in the previous network. Now for the physical host, just in case you need to manage it somehow, I do suggest that you leave this running in the sort of public network uh, where you are connected yourself just so you can always get to it. But uh, one thing uh, that's uh, of course um, a good thing to get done is to make sure that the firewall machine is now also starting up automatically. If you've got how to do that, you can go back and revisit the previous video. So make sure you go and add this as a machine that's starting up automatically. Now, the machines we have right now is basically the uh, domain controller here. We have the vCenter. So we could, uh, of course, uh, start logging into them and so on. But before we do that, there's one thing we have to do with VMware, which of course is to actually get this moved uh, to the other network. Now, uh, here you can see because I used the host previously, we can do a little bit of a cleanup. We can also see the network here. We have the VM network. And if we say browse, ideally we want to move it to production. Now, this is a live machine here. So let's go and actually log in. And a good question, of course, is which IP address should it have inside? Well, that's a little bit up to you, I, I guess, but um, I think I will basically give it a dot 101 uh, in this uh, environment here. Now we could use the server manager here. I'll just actually close that down. Instead go to network connections. Now don't forget, this is a domain control here. So in an ideal world, we would have just deployed this uh, to the correct network to begin with. Ah, some uh, fun stuff here, okay. Let's uh, go to the uh, control panel instead. See that happen a few times. So we can definitely do it from here. Okay, change adapter settings. Yeah, that works. So we have an IP here already. The good news is we are on the console. So let's see here. Uh, it already has this dot one, 51, so we could uh, of course, make sure it gets into this uh, network here. We want to make sure it keeps being using it, it itself as the DNS. And then we could call it dot 101 here, for example. Okay, okay. Now, this is of course going to cause a few uh, issues here. So uh, one of the things we uh, will want to do is also go and make sure that DNS is uh, set up correctly. There's definitely going to be some, some fun uh, issues here potentially. So let's go and, and take a look. So we have the uh, record here. And this should now be 2.101, of course. Get the reverse DNS fixed. Ah, okay, uh, that's okay. Let's see here, what else do we have? The host, I actually wanna leave the host on this network, so we'll, we'll leave that alone. The uh, vCenter we can come back and fix in just a little bit. And then we have the, uh, the main controller itself here. Let's go and take a look inside. So it complained that it couldn't update it because there was no reverse DNS for that part of the network. Well, that, that made sense. So let's go here and say we want a new zone and we'll push it out everywhere. IP before again, and it should be for the 192.168.2 network. And we'll say secure updates only for now, finish. And since we're at it, we could also, just so that it's ready for later use, go and set it up for the DR network that we also created. Uh, don't need this at this very moment, but uh, no big loss to uh, to get it done at the same time. So let's go here and uh, for fun, I'll just uh, sort of pretend that we're making a mistake here. Let's see if we can get it to start populating stuff inside. So we get these uh, records here uh, set up. Let's see, we had the uh, domain controller here as well. Uh, starting to get everything populated. Let's go in here and take a look. So this is pointing to the DNS, not to the uh, specific IP. So that's, that's all good. Sort of just going through, making sure that, that they shouldn't be referencing uh, IPs, but uh, since we're here anyway, why not take a quick look? Oh, let's see, what do we have here? There was another one right there. So we'll get that updated as well. Oh. Ah, okay, so it seems uh, both of them are here, so we'll clean this one up instead. That's okay. This is a little bit messy because I 
I'm basically now changing the IP addresses here, but uh, we'll survive. So there are some SRV records here. The, yeah, all, all looks fine. Okay, so let's go back just to kind of make sure that we get all of this double checked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's another example of that. Uh, now they are both, uh, both pointing to the same thing, so we'll just clean up the old one. So far, so good. Almost done, I think. Oh, another one. Okay, so I think we've gotten most of this stuff here fixed. Get rid of this one from here. So I think this machine is uh, pretty much ready at this point in time. Uh, of course, the next step was to actually get it moved over into this network. So let's do that. And then from here, we can basically double check a little bit that it's functional. Let's see here if we have some connectivity on this now. Seems like yes, so that's good. And uh, if I was to uh, try from my own local machine here, let's see if I'm able to reach it. That also seems to work. So great news. That means we have a fully operational routing here. So let's close this. And then of course, one of the next steps will be to get the vSender migrated inside as well. And not necessarily a requirement, but um, I think it would be uh, good to, to have that operational because I do want to basically have it inside. So a question then of course is which side should it be on? Should it be on the production side or <clears throat> should it be on the uh, DR side? I think having it on the DR side would just make the most sense. So in that um, example here, let's try and see if we can figure out how are we going to uh, get it up and running. So before we start actually migrating this vSender to the uh, DS side, one thing we want to make sure is that the DNS is functional. You may remember that from when we were deploying the host. So let's go back to the domain controller here. I'm actually using the uh, direct connection to the host so I don't lose the uh, connectivity to the vSender during all of this migration uh, stuff. So if we go down, we see we have our vSender uh, here. Uh, Let's uh, make sure that it gets a new IP that should be on the dot tree network. And uh, let's give it a dot 11 IP. We'll make sure that a PTR record gets set up. We have that set here from earlier. We can see this is uh, all ready now. So let's try and see if we can reach the one dot 31 IP, on the whammy interface of the vSender. Okay. And then from here, we need to go to networking, edit, next. And of course we have the uh, host name, DNS here. And uh, what kind of IP address should it uh, get? Well, this is for DNS. And down here we have for uh, the um, vSAN itself. So this would be the uh, domain controller uh, right now. That's 101. Uh, later on, of course, we'll want to have more uh, domain controller is deployed, so there's one on the DR side as well, but we just don't have it right now, so I'll leave that uh, like this. And then we want this to have an IP address on the other side. And don't forget to put in the default gateway, of course. Scroll down, no IPv6. Next. And we type in the administrator username here, vSphere.local. Password. Next. And then we get a little bit of a warning here. That's okay. Now notice there's a few warnings here. One of them is that once we do this, we'll have to go and set up Active Directory again. Okay, no big deal. We'll be able to do that. Now this could take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to pause the video here while we get this done. At this point, as you can see, the network update is in progress, and now it's actually doing all of this work. If you encounter some issue in the previous step, make sure, first of all, that your local computer here has DNS working. Um, previously, uh, you had to go and change the 
local network adapter to potentially use the domain controller as a DNS server. Now it would potentially be the time to go and change that to point to the new 2.101 IP, of course, if you didn't already do this when we were changing the IPs. Other than that, this should be working fine, but let's wait and see what kind of results we get here. Okay, so I actually got a little warning up here, unable to connect to the vSender server. So this is, of course, very interesting. So the real question is, what kind of state is it in now? So if we try to reach the old IP, which I believe is 1.31, then uh, we see that this is not possible. Let me try the new IP. That also doesn't seem to really work. So the real question is, what kind of state is it in right now? We can click close, of course, but uh, it's, it's, it's not really responding at all now. So I guess we could try and uh, log in via the command line here and uh, see. Oh, here we can see that. Ah, let's go back for one second here. It says it has the 3.11 IP. So, so far, so good. Maybe uh, giving it a little bit of a, um, a check here, networking wise, just to see if uh, all is well. It could be a good idea. Log in here. Okay, configure management network. Okay, so we see the tree.11, tree.1. So all of this is good. So what could be the problem? Well, of course, the problem is clear. It's in the wrong port group right now, right? Because as you may have already figured out, in the previous virtual machine, we had to go and change the network. Now it's with the right IP, but it's in the wrong network. So this makes perfect sense. So let's go here and get that to change. Set that to save. And then if we go and pull up a little uh, ping console here, let's try and see. So that seems to be working all completely okay. Let's go back and try and see what if we try to reach it via the IP now, 3.11.5480. Yeah, so it looks pretty good so far. You can actually log in. It's, it's complaining a little bit about memory that it's running low. I guess it would always like to have some more memory that that's probably not unrealistic. So let's try via the vCircuit. Ah, that was not the right port here. Let's get rid of that. See if we can get to the vSphere client. Ah, uh, no, it's complaining that we didn't use DNS, which is fair enough. We did already update DNS, so that should be working. Let's give it a try. Let's see if that works. If we uh, go back to the domain controller here and take a, a peek, we can uh, try and open up DNS. Uh, just to confirm, but, uh, it's set up. So we, we did in fact give it a 3.11. Um, ah, here we go. So it just took a little bit to do the resolution. Let's go back. Seems we can uh, even log in. There's some connection issues here. Uh, probably that was because it, it couldn't connect. So let's try and just say a connection, connect, oops, connection, connect. Okay, it says it's being managed by a different vCenter. Well, that's basically this one, but uh, that means we'll have to authenticate again. So let's do that. Next, 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 finish, get rid of this. We can even open up some recent tasks down here. We can see it's in process right now. And here we go, all of the machines up and running. So now we have our firewall, we have our vSender, the domain controller, everything migrated over, and we are ready to continue on with building the lab. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you didn't already, and let me hear from you in the comments if there was anything you think we should have done differently, anything else you'd like to see, in the upcoming videos. Other than that, hope to see you in the next video.